Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Baron de Dronco speaking. I'm here with uh, Ronick, uh, my colleague. Uh, we're just waiting for a couple more folks to trickle in uh, before we start the webinar. Uh, you have come to the right place if you're looking for a uh, solid introduction to the Municipal Energy Champions Program uh, being offered by the Municipal Climate Change Action Centre. Um, so don't uh, go anywhere, uh, stay tuned. Uh, we're just gonna wait until 3.05, so um, just a minute or so, and then uh, we'll get started. All right, uh, well, we'll get started. I'm, uh, so as I said, uh, my name's Berend. Uh, thank you for joining us this afternoon uh, for a Municipal Energy Champions webinar. Uh, I'm here uh, with my colleague, Ronick, who will be co-leading the program with me. Uh, just a couple of housekeeping uh, rules or just things to note. Uh, this is a Teams live event. Uh, you are all on mute on your end and the video is turned off, uh, but feel free to type any questions that you may have. Um, and uh, my colleague Ronick and I will be doing our best to keep track and answer them as we can. Uh, also, this will be recorded and will be made available uh, for you afterwards to share. Um, so without further ado, I will get started. Um, I did also uh, want to recognize before I get started that uh, I'm currently presenting from Treaty 7 territory uh, and my colleague Ronick is based up in Treaty 6. And uh, we'd like to acknowledge that there are many uh, First Nations, Métis and Inuits who have had their footsteps mark these lands for centuries and whose presence continues to enrich our vibrant communities. Actually going to flip back to the Action Center slide. Just a, a brief rundown of the Municipal Climate Change Action Center. Uh, we were founded in 2009, so we've been around for a little while. Uh, and we're actually a partnership between the Alberta Urban Municipalities Association, that's AUMA, Rural Municipalities of Alberta, RMA, and the Government of Alberta. Uh, our impact. Uh, you can see some high level stats here. They're all pretty exciting stats and continue to grow as we deliver our programs. Uh, something cool to note is that uh, we've offset almost 400,000 tons of uh, CO2, so carbon dioxide equivalent emissions over the lifetime of all the projects that we funded uh, with municipalities. And uh, we've installed uh, more than uh, 14 megawatts and counting of uh, solar. So that's quite quite the accomplish accomplishment. Uh, in the agenda today, uh, we're going to be talking about the Municipal Energy Champions Program. Uh, so that'll include a, an overview of the program timeline, uh, steps that we will cover uh, within the duration of the program, uh, our intended outcomes, and last but not least, how to apply. Um, when I say last but not least, it's actually not the least because we're also here uh, fortunate with Brazo County, who was a past Municipal Energy Champions Program participant, uh, and they'll be sharing their experience with the program, um, which, uh, to no surprise, is quite a positive one. So we look forward to having them uh, join us uh, to share with you some of the uh, their great experience with the program. So in terms of what the program is all about, we're about creating municipal energy champions um, that make a lasting contribution to their municipality. 
Um, so it's not just about uh, building the capacity of a specific energy champion or staff or volunteer in the community that's really uh, tied in and uh, working closely with the municipality. Uh, we're talking about building the greater uh, municipal capability to do energy management and to uh, continue on that energy management path even after the six months of the program have passed. Um, so what you'll be doing is you'll developing that capacity um, which will positively influence uh, your transport, building and other infrastructure operations uh, in terms of energy savings, cost reduction, uh, so specifically operational costs, but uh, in certain instances as well as uh, operation uh, may even entail capital. Um, and to cap that all off, all this energy being saved also reduces emissions. So if you have a municipal based uh, target or uh, roadmap for reducing emissions, um, sort of leading as a municipality in, in the sustainability front, uh, which then encourages and sets a good example for the rest of your uh, community. Uh, so to do all of this, we're providing you with some education. I'll touch on that as uh, some technical support and th coaching throughout the program. So that's really intended to be um, uh, um, a handheld. We're here to help you support you uh, with energy management um, throughout the duration. Um, we do expect a level of commitment. So we're talking about 10 hours per month for six months. Uh, to commit to the program uh, and uh, we're uh, we are open to expressions of interest for this program all the way through to 4 p.m very precise on december 18th so in terms of the timeline of the program uh, we're stepping through this at a high level from launch to building your skill set to helping you scope out and assess where you're at uh, in terms of your energy management capability, in terms of uh, the uh, information you have on energy consumption at your municipality, and an assessment of uh, where we'd like to, uh, to help you go. Um, the next phase is taking that assessment of where you are at and turning it into a plan, uh, which is one of the main deliverables at the end. Um, and that means that we're going to be doing some energy management work. So um, a detailed inventory of all your energy consumption and maybe also some production. Uh, we're going to help you with the root cause analysis, uh, which entails looking at the root causes of energy consumption. So kind of digging into, well, if you have a, a larger than expected uh, gas consumption in some of your assets, we're going to help you understand uh, by um, interfacing and, and uh, coaching how to uh, how to dig into the root causes either from an equipment uh, or from a behavioral standpoint. Uh, we'll also uh, facilitate some building uh, walkthroughs um, so we'll support uh, doing high level energy audits uh, and when I say high level I mean these audits are not going to be your uh, ASHRAE um, ASHRAE sort of certified energy audits. These are more uh, to get you started and uh, get, get ideas flowing for what we can do next. So all this accumulates in what we call an energy profile, um, which we'll touch on a bit later as well in this presentation. So what do we mean with the program launch? Uh, this is where we'll introduce uh, the main aspects of the program to municipal staff. So uh, this this launch webinar is open to not just the municipal energy champion, uh, but the broader staff base of your municipality. Uh, we'll review the program goals and ask ask sorry answer key questions about next steps. And it's also an opportunity for networking between. Uh, the municipalities that are participating. So this will be a webinar that's open to all the participants. It's not one per uh, participant. So that'll be a great opportunity for everyone. Scoping and assessment. So this is where we're talking about 
uh, understanding the goals of the program and how it relates to your municipal local context. So if you have specific greenhouse gas emission reduction targets or sustainability goals or energy management goals, such as just reducing total cost of energy, um, as well as defining the scope. So in certain cases, the scope of all buildings, all transport, all infrastructure is simply too large to handle uh, in the duration of the program based on the amount of staff time available. So this is where we zoom in and define a scope for the program. We will also spend some time, uh, recall I mentioned uh, capacity building. So in this case, we're gonna spend some time on energy management basics. And this includes uh, laying the ground on global energy trends. So we're talking about uh, trends in renewable energy production, uh, best practices in energy management, um, a little bit about energy itself. So uh, a lot of the times uh, you'll hear people talk about kilowatt hours and kilowatts. So you're kind of learning the difference between those and how that relates to GHG emissions. So this is pretty helpful. And we also try and make it uh, tailored to your needs. Uh, so certainly uh, if there are specific aspects of energy management that you'd like to learn more about, uh, we can help with that as well. Uh, collecting municipal energy information. Um, Ronak, please remind me if this is where you're taking over um, or if I should continue. I, I think the next slide, so do you, okay. you want to give us Great, slide? I'm sorry, yeah. And so collect municipal information. This is part of that laying the groundwork of an assessment. So this, this is always the first step of energy management. You kind of want to know where you're at. And so this is where we'll help collect the various utility bills, be it gas or electric uh, or propane or wh whatever the main sources of energy are, and we lay it all out. Um, so we've got some tools, but we're also very happy to work with the existing tools that you might have built already uh, within the municipality. Uh, and we also uh, define the scope um, when we do that collection. So here is an example of the utility bill. Uh, you can see that there's energy charges. There's also transmission and distribution charges. So we help you understand what the difference is and how energy management is going to impact those specific uh, line items on the bills. All right. Um, so I just asked my colleague uh, Ronick when he'll be taking over. Um, and I think he's ready to go with uh, taking control over the slides and to help you um, understand the, the subsequent steps of the program. Yeah, thanks, Baron. I'm just going to, uh, well, first uh, uh, transfer over my video as well so folks can uh, see me. Um, so hi, everyone. Good afternoon. Thanks for joining. I'll take us through the last half of the steps here um, before we get to our guests from Brazil County. Um, so in step five now, we're going to be quantifying our energy use. So here we're going to use some of the data that Baron's talking about, the energy bills, the cost records, what have you, to establish an energy profile. Uh, this profile will be defined for that scope of work that Baron uh, outlines. Um, so the detail and quality of analysis will vary a little bit, and that depends on the proposed scope by the champion. But basically, we're going to be able to analyze the data and determine our energy use trends. Uh, these trends give us a better understanding of the factors that affect energy performance and can help in identifying steps for reducing energy consumption. Uh, so there are a couple of different uh, you know, techniques or strategies when it comes to doing this more quantitative type of review. Uh, one is, like I said, to develop those use profiles, and this can help us identify where we have peaks and valleys in our consumption. Um, and then we can relate those peaks and valleys to operations or key events that might influence uh, our consumption. We're also able to compare performance. Um, so here we can compare the use and performance data. Uh, it might be a historical performance. Um, so this is showcased in the example you see on the slide today. Um, you can see this, uh, it's not labeled for you, but this uh, is three years worth of data, of monthly data. 
Um, so we can see a yearly trend with some uh, high consumption uh, peaks in the wintertime and in that valley in the summertime. Um, but we can also see three different lines which represent three different years, letting us know how the building has performed historically. Uh, we could also do a comparative analysis. Uh, if you can imagine comparing two different types of buildings or assets that are similar in some nature. Uh, this kind of review can also give us an opportunity to assess the financial impacts. Uh, this connects to what Barry had mentioned at the beginning of the presentation. Uh, There's an opportunity for us to identify, you know, where are the areas of high cost energy use, uh, as well as understand, uh, you know, our, our demand costs versus our connection costs. And then it's also an opportunity to identify data gaps. It lets us know where there are areas where we don't have enough information and we need to go back and collect something that we missed. Um, so this step is really in place to uh, create an opportunity to track and record energy use and then uh, allow for a comparison. A comparison to a set of best practices. Uh, it might be other energy users or it might just be for future energy consumption. But basically it's a way to understand our energy use in our community. Uh, in the next step, we're going to try and understand energy consumption in our buildings. Uh, so we'll be providing uh, the champions with resources that can enable them to conduct the simple assessments of their own buildings. Uh, like Baron alluded to, the walkthrough doesn't replace an official energy audit, but it still is a valuable opportunity. It lets us check if our equipment is performing as it's intended. It reminds us to perform any scheduled maintenance that we need to do to prevent any problems. And it's also a good opportunity to look for some simple improvements. Can we, can we notice that our windows are ajar? Um, can we notice that we have some old halogen light bulbs? Uh, can we really flag those low cost or no cost upgrade opportunities? And then we'll also be helping with resources that help evaluate the behaviors that impact energy consumption. So champions will be able to better understand how users interact with the building and if we can maintain that comfort level in a more energy efficient manner. So this step is really all about buildings and looking for energy efficiency improvement opportunities. Our next step um, with the champions is to uh, work with them and present the findings of what we've seen back to the relevant municipal staff or council members that may be engaged in the work we're doing. So it's always important to do this type of engagement, especially internally, um, but it's also important if we think about the capacity building aspect of this work. So we can use this opportunity to build engagement and awareness around the internal need for energy management. And it's also a good foundation to increase support for any future planning or implementation opportunities we may choose to, uh, you may choose to pursue. And then the eighth step is the last step in the program. Um, so champions will attend a webinar, um, another learning session, this time on implementation planning and continuing success. Uh, we're gonna be covering three different modules again. Uh, the first one is all about municipal energy plans and understanding how to create a strategy to move forward. Uh, the fifth is around uh, financing and the uh, economics of energy efficiency um, to give everyone a basic understanding of that. And then we'll be covering some materials that highlight uh, uh, other advisory or funding opportunities, uh, basically trying to help you maintain some of the momentum that you've uh, created over the six months. Um, so we're expecting champions to participate together in this learning session, but of course uh, the schedule and locations uh, are to be determined when we get there. Um, but uh, again, the goal of this step is to really help municipalities determine an approach for developing an implementation plan. So that was a, that was a detailed look at each individual program step. Um, you know, that covers uh, the eight steps over the six months. Um, and hopefully you can see how um, these steps are connected to the program outcomes. So we're hoping that by participating in this program, uh, you can help your municipality to one, understand the importance of energy management and consumption. Um, two, to better track and manage your energy consumption. Three, move forward in that planning process. Uh, next, to understand the financing options that exist to help you offset the costs of some of these kinds of projects. 
Um, with that, identify or at least learn how to identify for uh, opportunities in energy efficiency and then uh, also uh, help you develop an approach for energy management initiatives. Uh, we want you to start planning and stop reacting. Uh, so if you are uh, joining us today and you're interested in applying for this program, um, a couple of key, key steps to do so. Um, one is to read the guidebook. You can find the guidebook on our website, mccac.ca, um, under the Municipal Energy Champions webpage. Uh, the guidebook really is a, a fully fleshed out version of what you're hearing today. It covers lots of details that Baron and I uh, mentioned. Um, so you can, you can review that you know, at your own pace and reference back to it. Um, but the key thing is to uh, submit an expression of interest. So municipalities must submit an EOI to notify us of your interest in participating in the program. Uh, the EOI will ask you a couple questions. Um, basically, it will ask you to explain your need for this type of energy management support and how you see it benefiting your local municipality. Um, and if you need some assistance with the form, uh, you're not just you're not sure what we're asking, you know, let, let us know. Um, Baird and I would be happy to kind of walk you through what we're asking, you know, if it's an email question or even over the phone, we're happy to do that with you. Uh, the expressions of interest will be screened um, by us um, after December 18th, which is the deadline. Um, we're going to be identifying a maximum number of municipalities, um, 10 municipalities um, that are best suited to benefit from the program. Um, so that's, I guess, to say that the completion of an expression of interest does not guarantee you a place as a participant. Um, we'll be notifying everyone if their EOI was successful or unsuccessful. Uh, this program is designed specifically to support small communities that have been unable to engage in this type of energy management or climate change planning work previously. Um, but, but it is open to any municipality um, by filling out the expression of interest and, and sharing your information on the rationale for applying to the program. Um, we'll be able to, to select on that, on that perceived need for energy management support. Um, all the applications will be evaluated uh, against each other equally. Um, so really it, it, uh, it comes down to your ability to express your uh, need. So some of the criteria, as I mentioned, is that need. Um, as well as the availability and commitment that you can give from staff. Um, we're asking you about some of your existing energy management capabilities, uh, as well as your size. So do consider those when you are applying. Uh, we want to make sure that the participants take the commitment quite seriously. Um, so what we're expecting from municipalities, uh, we're expecting you to appoint a staff or, or a couple of staff to act in that champion's role. Uh, we're expecting you to sign a letter of commitment, which pretty much uh, details that you are taking this work as, a, as, a, as an important commitment. Um, we're expecting around 60 hours of staff time stretched over that six month period. Um, this is flexible depending on you know, the scope of analysis you want to dive into. Um, but regardless of that, we want you to work through each of the steps that we outlined and meet those deliverables. Um, and while you do that, we want to make sure you are actively participating and providing feedback. Uh, but we're also committed to you know, deliver this to you. Um, we understand that we live in you know, this COVID era with a lot of uncertainty uh, of what's going to happen in the next couple months, let alone you know, next, next June. Um, so we're committed to delivering the program in a way that aligns with the risk profile for your you know, local context. And Baird and I are both uh, staff that are assigned to this program and we'll, we'll be working with you through each step. And while we do that, we're also open to receiving comments and feedback to help improve your participation in our program. Uh, so yeah, I wanted to take some time now just to highlight uh, the pilot program, which, uh, which is the preceding version to this new offering. Um, so early this year in, in January, um, six municipalities started, you know, started their journey through the Municipal Energy Champions pilot program. Uh, the municipal staff were identified to take on this role and then they received the training, technical support and coaching that was offered in the pilot version of this program. Um, so the six municipalities were the town of Folair, the town of Thorsby, the town of Two Hills, the town of Whitecourt, the municipality of Web Buffalo, as well as Brazo County. 
So you can learn more about these champions uh, and, the, and the pilots that we ran in a showcase that's up on our website. Um, so, so again, that's mccac.ca, and you can navigate to the project showcase part of our website this time. But, but today, um, we're hearing from uh, the Brazil County folks that participated in our program. Um, Sandra McIntosh is here. She's the Economic Development Officer and Climate Adaptation Specialist for the county. And she's joined by Zimran Kokar, who is the Project Manager for Public Works at the county. We'll be asking them questions on their experience in the Champions Pilot Program, um, what were some key lessons they learned, as well as any initiatives they're moving forward with. So Sandra, Zimran, thanks for joining us today. Thank you for having us. Yeah. So I'm just going to uh, transfer your video up onto the queue so folks can see you. Um, but I thought maybe we could just start by helping folks familiarize with Brazil County. Um, could you tell us a little bit about the municipality? Sure. Uh, Brazil County is uh, west of Edmonton, so we're in the Boreal Forest. And we're about a half an hour south of the Yellowhead Highway uh, before you get to Edson. And we're about just over an hour from the uh, QE2 and the Edmonton International Airport. So we're along the high load corridor. So there's lots of lots of big trucks and lots of projects moving. So we get to see a lot of that um, every day. Uh, the county is new. It's only 32 years old. Uh, we used to be part parkland, part Leduc County. And then uh, they split in back in 1988. So we became um, Brazo number 77. And then in 2002, we became Brazo County and are now, yeah, ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> but we have a we have a big history out here. We're similar. Um, I'm going to say we're a little bit better, but we're similar to NISCU in that we are an oil and gas services industry, and that's kind of what we're known for, but there is just so much more going on here. Uh, a lot of our oil and gas companies and stuff have uh, rejigged what they do, and they're doing more new energy and new ways to do uh, oil and gas and coming out with some really great ideas that are going to be some of the stepping stones that we're going to need to get to the the energy that we want to be using on a, on a more basis. Um, so we, we're working at that and lowering our GHGs and just becoming better stewards of our natural resources up here. Yeah. Do you want to add anything? Um, no, I think. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Great, yeah. Cool. Uh, yeah, so I guess I'll, uh, I'll ask you the next question here then. Um, so if you can think back to this time last year, um, do you remember, you know, why did you apply to the pilot program? Well, we are, we are also part of um, FCM is partnering too, and they have a climate, uh, it's climate change. We're in the adaptation portion of it. So climate change staffing position, and that's where uh, my position came in. And it's, it's on changing policies and changing how we do things and coming up with a really great strategy for how we can uh, be better stewards of our energy. And when Ronick and when I heard about this program, it would fit right in and it would actually help us with the other program as well, giving us some more individual steps involved. So we were very, I have to say, we were very excited here when, when this program came on. Um, yeah, so when we, yeah, that's, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. I know. I know it's a long time ago, so it's uh, uh, hard to think about. It's only been a year since then. Um, so I think this is maybe a, a tough question. Uh, you know, obviously, COVID nineteen has been such a large impact on everyone. You know, especially municipalities and, and the role that they take. Um, you, you were participating in the program um, around the same time that the county was, you know, dealing with COVID and framing a response. Um, could you share anything about how COVID has impacted your participation in the program? We were lucky enough that we got to do that one workshop um, before COVID hit, and we got to meet uh, in Thorsby and have some some one on one conversations, which was great. So we got a good foundation starting off the program. Um, but having COVID and then not being able to have um, you guys come out to do the walk through the building 
was was too bad because that would have been a really big a big deal for us to find out specifically hands on what where we're where we're lacking and where we could be taking advantage of some opportunities. Um, but that was really the only place COVID I think hurt us was in that everything else Zoom meetings and phone calls and me throwing all of my <laughs> <laughs> invoices at you going I've gone down a rabbit hole again <laughs> was great that maybe yeah you weren't there to <laughs> in person <sighs> yeah it's uh you know it's tough to maybe think about um you know before we were always meeting with with zoom and whatnot but it was it was quite the pivot from what we had intended so I appreciate that you were able to pivot you know with us um, and uh, still participate well uh, so, so thinking about um, the the program, and you've mentioned some of that work, um, but but are there specific aspects that you found um, had the most value uh, for for you? Well, my background is in economic development. That's that's the other half of my job here, and so this was a huge everything climate related is a huge learning curve for me. So, learning um, not only what opportunities are out there, but how do we even find out where we are right now? Like we have a lot of uh, solar panels and that sort of thing and we have a, a TV in our front lobby that tells us what energy is being used and how much of it is, is solar and how much of it isn't and but there was nothing really being done with that data we had collected it but we weren't making use of it so having this and having really right just having you as a mentor and having you to be somebody that we can bounce all these questions off is really the the best aspect of it because we were able to ask those questions and we had somebody you know tuned into exactly what we were doing that made it a, a better success well that's really some really nice feedback um how about if you think about the municipalities i think that question was maybe framed more towards you know the, the two of you and, and your work um could you could you maybe think about how the program benefited the municipality in general oh Huge. It, it opened our eyes, I think, to different ways that we can that we can capture GHGs and different different things out there where we're moving forward more with um, geothermal and there's some ideas around that that we can take advantage of maybe here and with the terrain that we have and some of the companies that we have in the oil and gas industry are going to they transfer really nicely over to geothermal and and in the drilling and all of that aspect there. So mm -hmm. some of the some of the learnings that we've gotten from going on this pilot project have really opened those doors for the municipality and have brought in our council and some of our local uh, industries as well. So it's yeah, it's benefited right across the board. And I just want to add to that. Mm -hmm. So basically, um, you know, as Sandra's mentioned, we we are we have actually in the recent time uh, you know, been concentrating on uh, energy management and and also climate change and with uh, our council actually adapting in 2017, I believe, the CPAC, which is the uh, climate adaptation uh, policy, which actually asks us to implement uh, proactively climate change and think about those things when we're delivering projects. And so, you know, we have solar panels that we've installed uh, with the uh, also, the uh, you know your guys's um, other program that we had in the past in 2018. I can't remember its name now, <laughs> but it was for the uh, LED retrofits and all those types of things with the you know building. So we've done that, and also um, I believe your question is going to come up with the project. So so yeah, it's it's benefited. The program has been really good. Also. When Sandra asked me to collect all those, uh, you know, electro the, the data for the yeah, I needed yeah, we needed the fuel that the cars were yeah. going to use. We needed we needed the lamp, yeah, the lighting yeah. for for the county. We needed yeah, we needed it all. So yeah, so just thinking about all those things and seeing where we're all going. So it's it was really practical for us. Yeah. Yeah. Not definitely. Yeah, that's that's great to hear, and I think you alluded to it, so I changed the slide ahead. Um, so yeah, you mentioned you mentioned the policy. Um, so it sounds like that's a great tool to help um, with the choices that you make as a municipality, thinking about energy and, and climate as you move forward. 
Are, are there other energy management or climate action projects that you're working on that complement that? Yeah, so I've kind of uh, gotten into the question a bit already. <laughs> so with energy management, I've mentioned already the few projects that we've done, like the big uh, solar panel project we have basically, I think, I don't remember on the top of my head, but I think it's about 200 panels of you know solar panels around, so that are complementing our own uh, electrical usage. And then with regards to the climate um, action, what we're doing is actually a very innovative project. It's the uh, uh, wetlands project. It's a pilot that we're doing. Uh, basically, uh, you know, we we've done a, a study. Uh, you know, of what, uh, where things are going. And we've found that wetlands are going to be lost, you know, at a very high rate. And so with the help of uh, uh, the University of Alberta and some expert researchers that have, you know, studied the wetlands, well, what we've developed is a, uh, a flo floating modules or uh, floatable uh, plants. And wetlands essentially are nature's filtration systems. So they help actually uh, just naturally uh, clean and polish uh, surface water. So what we're doing is using the, the natural wetlands and their natural abilities to to clean uh, our lagoon wastewater. So we've done the phase one and our phase two has been approved for next year. So we're going to be going ahead with that and actually we're going to be installing some solar panels along the side of the, of the lagoon to actually aerate it. So we're going to incorporate uh, solar power aeration along with the uh, actual, you know, the wetland plants that are going to be uh, cleaning. So it's, uh, yeah, we're doing some exciting things out here. Uh, and I forgot to mention that actually wetlands have been implemented in summer and warmer climates and, uh, you know, in hotter areas, but in Alberta and colder climates, uh, we are the you know, I want to say leading. I don't think I've seen any other ones here. So oh, say it. We are. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we haven't seen any other wetland projects that have been used for this specific purpose. So, so yeah, that's it for the projects portion, and uh, we'd be happy to answer any questions on that. Yeah, that's great. I didn't I didn't know that about the wetlands project. I know like the work we did together. It focuses on you know, climate mitigation. You know, how do we reduce our energy and our emissions? Um, but but closely tied to that is our adaptation work. How do we prepare for the changes from climate? So it's great to see an example where you're you're doing both. You're you're able to increase the resiliency, you know, in Brazos County and the local area, um, but also not compromise on, on a, a high energy or carbon intensity. Yeah, and sorry, I should also mention. So with the phase one, it's going to lead with the. Uh, uh, scientific journals that are going to be published by the U of A, of, uh, you know, pertaining to our mm -hmm. projects, which actually, uh, and then when we're done the second phase, it's actually going to be uh, published as well, where researchers and people can use the data that we uh, established to design similar sort of uh, uh, wetlands, uh, basically anywhere in Canada or, you know, anywhere they'd like. So, we're, we're just doing the groundwork for everybody here. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, someone's got to do it, so that's important. <laughs> well, and all of this kind of builds off of the policies that we're making that come out of this program and out of, yeah, other ones that we're making that we've got a high arcing um, climate change policy and now the way that it's written, we can have a wetlands policy come from underneath it. We can have an energy policy. We can have different ones. And then that way it keeps us in line with doing everything and not getting lost in one area or going down that rabbit hole and and yeah, yeah. <laughs> missing the rest. Yeah, that's great. I was wondering, you know, not to press you too much, but can we maybe dig into that a little bit? Um, like how does the policy work? Is it like a lens you apply when you look at projects or, or what is that process? Yes. Well, uh, it's council driven that everything oh, uh, that we do needs to go through an economic development lens and also a climate adaptation lens. So figure, mm -hmm. figuring out how to do that project better, how to do it as a better steward. So our policies then have to come in line with that. So we've got some crop policies that are on the books. We've got the wetlands policy. 
We've got some bio swales yes. policies that we're working on. I'm, I'm going to tap out of that one. <laughs> but it all builds into that. And then each department then is, is part of a working team that we have here. So each department then is in the know or should be in the know of what is going on and what's, what's out there, what's available. And then that can be brought into the different projects that we're working. Okay, yeah. I see, yeah. So I think that's a great example of like, you know, how do you implement something without kind of the foundations in place? So it so it sounds like this this process is it's really helpful for that. Yes, yes, very much. Great. Well, thanks so much for you know answering the questions that you know we had for you today. Um, I'll, I'll leave it open to the attendees if they do have questions that are, are for Sandra and for Zimran, like please type them and I'll, I can uh, facilitate that. Um, if you have you know, follow-up questions, you can get in touch with Baron and I. Um, we'll be happy to pass that along to, to Brazo County uh, if you want to learn more about their, their experience in the pilots, but maybe you're interested in the wetlands project or um, more of that planning, uh, planning processes. So uh, do let us know now if you have a question or, or if uh, you want to get in touch later. That's, that's great too. Um, there are a couple questions that have come in um, that pertain more to the webinar and the program topic. Um, so there's a question, is this being recorded? Uh, yes, so we've recorded this from the top of the session, so you'll receive that as a YouTube link uh, in the follow-up from this uh, session within a couple days. Um, there's also a question from Jocelyn at Strathcona County um, at, about the program. Um, she's asking if the program will be available in 2021 if you're not able to complete an EOI before December 18th. Uh, great question. Um, you know, it's it's our intent to offer further intakes of this program. Um, we want to continue supporting municipalities uh, with this. Uh, we had a lot of success with the pilots, um, which I think, you know, hopefully Sandra and we were able to highlight today. Um, if you are worried about the EOI, if it's uh, if it's more of like a process issue, like get in touch with us. We'll, we'll help you submit an EOI. Um, but if not, you, know, you can stay communicating with the Action Center. Um, you can sign up for our newsletter so you don't miss any of the announcements for future offerings. Um, so I think I was able to answer those two questions um, that what did come in. Um, I don't see uh, anything else coming in, but um, maybe I'll, I'll leave it open for folks to, uh, to submit before we wrap up. Um, yeah, uh, Sandra Zimmerman, thanks so much for joining us today and sharing a little bit about uh, your experience and also uh, the exciting work that you're doing. No problem. We yeah. enjoyed it. It's <laughs> nice talking about things that are working out so well. Yeah, yeah, yeah for fun. sure. So I look yeah, forward to the future. <laughs> I look forward to the future phases that come out of uh, the, the resiliency work and the wetlands project um, and anything else that you might be have going on. I know it's an exciting time in Brazo County and in, in that Drayton Valley region in general. So um, I'll keep an eye on that for sure. Excellent. Um, yeah, just to close out today, um, we'll just quickly look at some of our other programs. Um, so you can join Brazo County and many of the other municipalities across the province in taking action on climate change uh, by participating in one of our many funding programs or other advisory services. Um, or you're, if you're interested in developing a, a local property assessed clean energy financing solution, um, the Action Center is also the administrator for that across the province. And I'm not seeing any more questions, so I'll just take this time to again thank our guests for joining us today, um, as well as all of you for attending the webinar. Thanks for having us. Bye. Great. Bye now. Take care. Bye.